Are you sick of seeing peaceful people being locked away for victimless crimes? Instead of trying to get out of jury duty, consider taking it so you can do the right thing. A single juror with a conscience can send someone home to their family instead of to a jail cell. If there's no victim, how can there be a crime? And if the judge or prosecutor are keeping you in the dark, what are they trying to hide? You can vote your conscience instead of being a pawn of the state. For more information, Google jury nullification or check out the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. And welcome to the 160th, I think we're at the 160th, 160th, we're going to go with that episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a BIPCOT new government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. Especially you, Papa New Guinea. Ah, uh, there we go. See, look at that. We, we lose Dave and Andre actually picks a new place right off the bat. It's amazing how that works. Anyway, uh, you can learn more about this at BIPCOT.org. So yes, we are back, finally, I think. We're going to try this again. This is Jeremy. I got Andre, as you heard, and Shane with me tonight. What's up, gentlemen? Fantastic. All that so, geography uh, training I got in uh, middle school and high school is really paying off now. Excellent. <laughs> so if this is the 160th, is that counting the ones that we did at the fest? Yeah. Don't worry about those. Don't worry about them. <laughs> well, yes. Our, our two episodes at the fest were 157 and 158. I put an episode out for us last week because we because we tried the three of us tried to do a recording last week. It did not go very well. Uh, had all sorts of problems. It was all me. It was all on my end. Planet Fitness was just not uh, not willing to participate very well. Um, and uh, so I ended up putting out the one of the la- I think the last bit of recording I had from the fest or that week of the fest, which was uh, Shane Radliff and I doing one of his shows. Uh, Liberty Under Attack. So I put that out as one of our episodes last week, which was technically, I guess, 159. So yeah, this is 160. Um, So anyway, yeah, we're back. And uh, I'm sure the audio quality is not going to be the greatest on this one. I am currently sitting outside the Seaford Public Library. Uh, We're using Skype. But hey, we're here. So uh, Ah. yeah. I mean, you're piggybacking off of uh, state-funded internet? How atrocious. Hey, man, I got extorted to pay for this shit for fucking years. So you know what? I'm taking, How atrocious. I'm taking a little bit back, bitch. <laughs> Actually. Well, I'm, don't you don't you know, Jeremy, though, that once it's stolen and you have no claim to it? I thought you knew that. Oh, you're right. Well, I, thought, I, thought every, I thought every freedom-loving libertarian knew that. Silly, silly. You can't no. claim it anymore. You you're can't s- claim it anymore. You're gone. S- you're right. It's gone. You're right. You can do it. You're right, Andre. I, although, I'm mistaken. Fucking <laughs> although stealing it back does seem kind of like a sound counter-economic strategy, if you ask me. I would I would agree, but I'm, I'm actually not stealing their Wi-Fi. Even though I'm parked in their parking lot, I'm actually picking up the optimum Wi-Fi from somewhere around here, probably off of somebody's house. But again, I used to pay for that, and oh, I actually... Wow. I actually, okay. I actually have access to that. I have uh, my. Fr- I think I've talked about. The, well, I don't know. If it's been a while since we talked about it on the seeds. But I actually, I have a friend of mine actually set me up an account. Uh, set me up with a, a a password and account on her Optimum account, so I can access it from anywhere. Um, so I'm not actually stealing. This was given to me. <laughs> um, but hopefully this will uh, this will hold out a little bit better tonight. So anyway, so yeah, it's uh, it's been a while, guys, since we well, since the three of us have been able to get together. Well, we're not going to count. Yeah. we're not going to yeah. count last week. That was how that was horrible. But um, I guess we should pay, play a little catch up then, since uh, since that <laughs> that episode is probably never going to see the light of day. So what's what's been up with you, Andre? We haven't we haven't really talked to you much. It's been uh, it's been it seems like forever since we've actually done a show together. Yeah, no, it, it's it's been a while. It's been a while. Um, I'm still hanging steady on Steemit uh, through the ups and downs. Steemit like pumped really really hard over the uh over the summer and it's dropped back down to a dollar however same time uh last year or is it last year yeah yeah same time last year it was down to like 15 cents so i think we've uh dramatically increased our bottom floor which i'm really happy about 
Um, let's see what else I have. I, I, as I'm sure I've mentioned it to you and we had Rhonda on the show, so you guys should already be a little bit familiar with it. Um, we have uh, a community group on Discord called the Writer's Block. It's all about uh, improving your ability to write. Yes, yes. Well, I went to a I went to a meeting in Gatlinburg that we had for us, you know, collectively as the group, and then uh, with uh, a couple of tech guys from off of Steemit, and we're starting to put plans forward to implement a new front end to access the Steam blockchain, where we control. Um, how the information is presented. So instead of it just being literally everything on the blockchain coming up at once, we're just going to be featuring, you know, uh, literature, you know, fictional work from people that we have vetted as good authors and then people that we want to feature as well as getting the ball rolling on our publishing house. Oh, awesome. So we have like a, a three pronged approach pretty much to trying to develop writers and produce literature that's worthy of publication, both, on the internet and offline in the mainstream. So I've been dealing with that. Um, I also have, for a while, I was running a witness node. Uh, Steam runs on proof of stake instead of proof of work. Anybody who's familiar with crypto uh, knows how Bitcoin works. It's proof of work. You have to literally solve all these algorithms in order to to um, record a uh, a block of data and you get rewarded for it. Well, with Steam, it's proof of stake. So the way it works is you get voted by the users based on the weight of their stake, how much, how many tokens they're holding determines how many blocks you process, which determines how much you're rewarded. It doesn't actually have much to do with hardware as long as you have the minimum specs to be able to run everything. So I've been doing a committee witness now that myself and three people that I'm friends with, Ron is one of them, uh, we all banded together to kind of set things up as a, as a group as opposed to just having us each doing our own thing. And I've been dealing with that and uh, recently switched to new server setups with a new host and they're being a pain in the ass. And that's basically what I've been doing all day when I haven't been watching Mark Wahlberg hero films. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that sounds relevant to my interests. Uh, uh, writer's Block actually sounds like something I could benefit from. And then oh, uh, yeah. the, Dude, the proof come, of stake come stuff. On, please is really interesting too. Is that what you described? Is that sort of a delegated proof of stake? Yes, yes. DPO has delegated proof of stake. So right instead on. of it instead of it being, you know, how much stake the individual person running the node has, it's how much stake the people who vote for the people running the nodes, their total staked vote, that's what it counts as. So like for example, we have like about four hundred people voting for us and it totals however many and then there's other people above us people below us and it's basically how many votes you can get from how many people with however much crypto they have in their account right on that's what determines your positioning position ranking yeah and the obviously the higher up you get the more blocks you process the more rewards you get yeah one of my favorite altcoins is uh, cardano ada and uh that one runs on a delegated proof of stake also yeah yeah i've heard of cardano yeah, I still haven't looked into that one yet, but I've heard I've heard the same things. But that's really that's really awesome about what you guys are doing over there, because I mean, as I've talked about a lot, in like in my vlogs and a lot of my AA episodes, my uh, abolition of subtraction episodes. I mean, I have you know after a long time poo pooing steam, and I've become a huge fan of it, and that it it has become my new home. It's where I it's where all my content, where all of the seeds content, where everything goes first. And I still haven't delved deep enough into it. Like I'm still learning the way my way around there. But I love the community, and I'm always I'm always excited when I see people coming up with new projects and trying to like better the community and do things like this. So that that's fucking awesome, man. I'm I'm, I'm really psyched about that. And uh, well, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but along ahead. those same lines, I deleted my Facebook account. I am no longer on Facebook. Oh wow! Congratulations. Yeah, Yes, yes. I finally kicked the habit. It was it was good. I made a post about it and I was really excited about it. And it was weird the first like the following day when I didn't have it and like I went to pull up Messenger, you know, Facebook Messenger and I didn't have it anymore because I'd uninstalled it. I was like, I don't have this anymore. I'm done with this. I need to stop. And I have, and it's been a really nice feeling. The world seems a lot slower because I don't have things to constantly check on, but like it's totally worth it. I, I recommend everybody just unplug off of facebook if you can I i've would. been i've been weaning myself slowly and uh finding a little bit of refuge it's quieter over there so yeah uh, but uh it's sorry. definitely not it's, Actually, it's more peaceful than facebook 
Uh, I'm, I'm guessing you were talking about MeWe because you cut out on my end there for a second. Yeah, uh, he was. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. you were talking about MeWe. Yeah. I, yeah, uh, MeWe. It's funny. I, I was I was talking to somebody earlier and saying that I, I hadn't been on MeWe in a while, and I kind of felt bad because there's only one person on there who seems to care about me putting content, and it's uh, your Florida woman. Who <laughs> is always, Anytime I go over there, she's always like, why haven't I seen any updates from you? I'm like, I feel so bad. Like you're, She's the one person I keep trying to put my, my content up there. I just I haven't got around to it. Yeah. Um, but I did, I mean, I got completely off of social media for an entire weekend last weekend, uh, which was huge for me. Uh, I kind of forced myself into it because Murder Dog and I went camping in the uh, Moshannon State Forest out in Pennsylvania and had absolutely no inter- internet connection. <laughs> so I didn't have a choice. I had to be off everything for the weekend. And it was it was quite nice. It was... Uh, it was weird for the first like hour or so because you know just like Andre was saying, I kept grabbing for my phone to go check it, and I was like, "Oh wait a minute, you can't check anything, you idiot, you can't see anything." Um, but uh, once I got past that, like I left my phone in the car most of the time, <laughs> and uh, it was it was a very nice time to just not be connected. Although, yeah. as soon as I left and got back out on the road, the first thing I did was check Facebook because, you know, I'm still at it. I'm still addicted. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I could pull myself off at one of these days. I, I keep trying to justify it by saying, like, as much as, I, as much as I've grown to love Steam It and I love putting our con- like my content and our content there, we still don't have a, as big a fan base there. So Facebook does come in handy for being able to shit. I mean, even though Facebook's algorithms try to kill any outside links, especially links from Steemit, uh, it still is a good place for, for me to drop our content to actually get it in front of more eyes. So, I, Well, yeah, and I mean, marketing, of course, you know, plays a big role in what, what you want to utilize. You have a lot more reason to be on Facebook than I do. Me personally, I don't have any reason at all, which is why it was, it was actually pretty easy to cut ties, to be honest with you. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't expect I don't expect you as the guy who primarily is in charge. Or no, we're pulling up stakes. See you guys later. I, I, I yeah, that's not going to work. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, like I said, I I justify it by doing that. Today, I actually made the mistake of getting involved in a little back and forth with somebody, and then I quickly realized, oh, this is stupid. You're just going to walk away from this and let them have the last word and be happy with it and fine. Um, so I did. Um, but yeah, it's I, I I like I said though I, I I think it's I think it's probably a good idea for most people to try, just pull away unless you have a specific purpose like you know trying to market something or trying to you know gain uh, more subscribers or viewers or whatever to your, whatever content you're putting out there then yeah I, I think you, you're going about it the right way just get the hell off that damn platform just let it die. <laughs> I yeah. mean I'm pretty sure Mark Zuckerberg can still track. It makes me feel better, you know. Yeah, I, yep. I, I totally understand. Um, but yeah, uh, well, let's see, I, I haven't lost connection, but you guys keep dropping out on my end, which is is going to be interesting for the show. But whatever, like I said, we're trying here, folks. Uh, <laughs> with uh, with my court case coming up next, with my trial allegedly finally coming up next week, uh, I haven't had time to figure things out. But hopefully, once that's over, I'm gonna find a more. Um, steady location for us to record from so we don't have these issues anymore uh i'm actually trying to reach out to uh some local friends i have here and and hopefully be able to borrow their uh house (laughs) whenever we want to record so i can actually be hardwired that would be nice um Mm, yeah and uh and who knows i actually i actually uh a fan of ours apparently uh who I, i had never heard from before actually reached out to me on twitter the other day and i just happened to catch the message because i haven't been checking twitter for the most part either like i usually out on the road here i've been pretty much just using steam it and uh and facebook and occasionally i'll get to the other sites but i just happened to check in on twitter the other day and there was this message from a from a fan who said that she follows us on seeds you know on, on youtube and was really excited when she re- when she re- finally realized that i'm here on long island because apparently she's here on long island and is like feels like she's all alone she doesn't have any other anarchist friends here so i'm gonna that's legit cool yeah cool, cool. So, so i'm hopefully gonna meet up with her um we're gonna try to meet up this weekend depending on how things go with my kids because uh that's been another whole issue for me i've talked about that a lot on my vlogs and stuff like that and unfortunately i have not been able to see my kids much lately because they have been either one or both of them has pretty much been sick nonstop since before my trip to michigan 
um, which, and of course, in, in my current situation means when they're sick, I don't usually get to see them because they have to stay in their home in, the, in their apartment and I'm not allowed there because of, well, stuff I've discussed in the past. Um, so depending on, depending on how things go with them this weekend, I'm, I'm hopefully going to uh, meet up with this fan of ours and, you know, who knows, maybe she'll be able to, maybe she'll let me use her place. <laughs> to do some recordings um but either way i'm excited about it because you know it's it's oh i mean i got to see i got to see she see shane recently but you know it's always good to be able to hang out with other uh freedom loving individuals in real life and have conversations uh as much as i love doing these podcasts with you guys you know especially when the connection is better i uh, mm-hmm. it's definitely a lot more fun to actually sit down with somebody and you know share ideas and stories and whatnot so yeah i'm looking forward to that so uh yeah rachel if you if you hear this we're going to work this out. <laughs> we are going to meet up sometime in the very near future. Um, but yeah, so anyway, uh, I was going to say something else before and it totally slipped my mind. Um, oh yeah, we were talking about, uh, I was, I was talking about, uh, we were talking about Facebook and I, I, I said the, uh, I kind of, um, whatchamacallit, stepped into a little something today that I, I didn't really mean to. And then I quickly got out of it cause I've learned my lesson. Um, but it was actually related to a meme I put out, which, I have that's one thing. I, another thing I haven't been doing forever is my meme game has completely dropped off. I, I haven't been producing memes because, well, I'm not really paying attention to what goes on in the world. You know, I'm out here in my in my Honda Element with Murder Dog, and uh, we're just trying to live day to day and just you know trying to see my kids when I can, and then just trying to find other things to do. So I don't I don't read you know I don't check websites. I don't check. I don't even check the Facebook feed anymore to like see what's going on with other people. <laughs> So I've been so out of it that I haven't really made anything. And it was only because I've been listening to a, you know, I, I do I do still listen to my podcast and stuff. And I fell behind a bit a couple of weeks ago. I had like 30 something hours to catch up on. I finally whittled all the, that all the way down to, I think as of at least a couple hours ago, I haven't checked to see if I need to, uh, if there's any more that need to be downloaded. But I was down to like the last podcast. Um, but I had heard a lot of podcasts from people that I really like and respect, uh, namely Mance Raider, who we've had on this show, um, Dave Smith, Tom Woods, uh, and a couple other people, all talking about all of a sudden they're joining the Libertarian Party because of this whole Mises Caucus thing, um, which is being led, I believe, by Michael Heiss, who is somebody I've tried to get on this show and who actually reached out to me to get on this show multiple times and then just completely flaked on us. Um, and I haven't heard from him since, <laughs> but I kept hearing all these things. So I put out an abolitionist abstractions episode about it last week where I was kind of fired up and I uh, just wanted to rant a little bit, but it's continued to happen. And I still keep hearing people talk about this and it keeps coming up on podcasts. And I just listened to, uh, I think it was Mance's most recent one or one of his most recent ones where he kind of ripped into the people who are ripping into him for joining the LP and I was kind of disappointed in that because he was just throwing straw man after straw man out there to, at his uh, critics. Um, very disappointing. Um, but anyway, because of all that, I, I finally got around to making a couple of memes this week. And one of them was, well, poking fun at the Mises, Mises Caucus and their belief that they can actually change things around. And I posted it in one group uh, and somebody said there, oh, you better watch out. You're going to trigger some ANCAPs. And of course, you know, I responded by saying, well, then then my mission's accomplished. Um, so today I decided to post it in one of the ANCAP groups. And sure enough, oh my goodness, the butt hurt from these people is so unbelievable. I don't know what your guys' feeling is about this because we obviously haven't discussed this. I just kind of mentioned it briefly. Before. I have no idea about this, so this is all news to me. All right. Well, to, to catch you up base, briefly, um, the whole the, the Mises Caucus was started a few months back, maybe six months back. I don't even know. Michael Heiss is somebody who's been in the libertarian circles for quite a while. I, I've known him for years. I actually met him, God, five years ago now, probably. Yeah, 2013, I think I met him at a, an event we were at here in New York. Um, and I, I followed his work for a long time. He's like a, I don't, I don't know if he's considered like an independent journalist, but he was he was somebody who was always out there filming the police and stuff like that. And um, always trying to make a name for himself. But he and a bunch of other people got this idea in their head that, you know, what's been missing for the past five, six, however many years is uh, that energy that came out of the Ron Paul revolution and how, you know, so many of us, you know, allegedly either got to where we are today, either directly through Ron Paul or indirectly through Ron Paul. 
Um, and there, you know, they, they felt that they needed to, uh, the only way to get that energy back up was to take over the Libertarian Party. And that is what they've been trying to do. And this obviously caused some I- I- amazing strife within the party because, you know, there's been talk about the fact that the socialists and communists have taken over the party. Uh, apparently not a lot of people like the current uh, president. Was it the president of the party? I don't even know what the, what the goddamn titles of the people are. Uh, chair, the chair of the party, I guess. Um, whatchamacallit? Uh, what's his name? Nicholas Sarwark. Uh, I-, I believe a lot of people have an issue with him. And I know Tom Woods and him have been going sniping at each other back and forth on Twitter for months. But apparently, uh, you know, like I said, the Michael Heiss and these guys started the Mises Caucus and their whole thing is all about, you know, bringing libertarianism back to the Libertarian Party, which sounds great and all. And they, you know, their platform, they talk about a lot of the things that the original liber- like when they li- when the Libertarian Party was originally created in the what is it the early 70s I think late 60s early 70s yep. Yep. um mm-hmm. what's his name Nolan I for- always forget his first name was it David Nolan um whoever was whoever was one of the, the, the guy his last name was Nolan I always forget I think it's David Nolan maybe whatever um he's the one who essentially wrote what I guess could be equated to the white paper <laughs> on the li- on liber- on the Libertarian Party and you know the original thing he wrote and the the mission statement he set out was it w- had nothing to do with getting people elected. It was only about using the party as a platform to get the ideas of libertarianism out there. And this was done specifically because all, I believe all, it will, if not all, most of the original members of that party were actually anarchists. So they had no intention of winning any election and getting any position of power. They just wanted to be able to get this information in front of people and hopefully have people come to their own conclusions that would lead them to walking away from statism. Um, and obviously, since then, the party has twisted hardcore. I mean, last, I mean, last time around, fucking God, goddamn Gary Johnson and Bill Weld were the fucking nominees. I mean, you can't get, you can't get any further from the ideas of, of the original Libertarian Party than those two fucks. Um, well, you can't bomb Aleppo if you don't. This is very true. (laughs) What's Aleppo? What's a, what's Aleppo? Uh, yes, Gary. Um, but anyway, so that's their, uh, so, so they, they have part of this as their platform, but they also talk about the fact that they're trying to get people elected. And I don't know, I have a big problem with this because, I have never seen, like, I keep asking, and anytime this ever comes up, can you please provide me the historical examples of this actually working? You know, (laughs) like, when does this actually work? And when has anybody actually gotten in power and not either been uh, relegated to absolutely worthless and not able to do anything or has been converted to the dark side and started making concessions and, uh, and, and eventually leading themselves further and further away from their original stated goal? Because I don't know about you guys, but I haven't been able to find any, you know? Well, I don't, I don't know. When socialists get into power, they do exactly what they plan on doing. And then they continue to get more so. Okay. So does exactly what they think. Okay. I, I, will I, mean, grant, I, I will grant you that. But I meant, I meant from a libertarian perspective. <laughs> use case. Well, no, but I mean, it's demonstrated that it is. It is, it is possible. It is possible. Okay. So, it, so while I while I don't fault them for trying, I don't think they're going to see that much success. Well, yeah. I and 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 normally, I mean, I I've talked about this uh, over the past couple of years that my attitude uh, has has shifted a lot. Where I, you know, I'm I'm no longer such an absolutarian about oh you can't do things this way. It's just not going to work. Um, you know, I've been more about the well, yeah, you gotta, you know take as many approaches as you can you know dave always used to talk about that you know d- d- doing it you know putting as many pro- oh yeah you know putting attack many- at all angles exactly so like from that un- from that perspective i can understand it but because of all the hype about this all of these bigger name libertarians like i said like tom woods and and although i think tom's joining of the libertarian party had more to do with his his ongoing battle with nicholas sarwark than anything else because he specifically tweeted at him that he tweeted at Nicholas that he was joining the Libertarian Party pretty much specifically because of what something Nicholas had said about him. Um, but the rest of them are all joining um, because they think or they seem to think that it's going to uh, reinvigorate this movement. And I don't know, man. Like I said, 
I I know a lot of people credit Ron Paul for bringing everybody to liberty and stuff like this, but I don't really recall Ron Paul actually accomplishing much of anything. Well, that's the whole point is like uh, Ron Paul and the Libertarian Party in general were kind of formed to just kind of spread the message of libertarianism. They weren't really trying to win. And it seems like when they do try to win, they water down the message too much. But uh, yeah, I mean, they uh, they do better when they're trying to spread the message to a wider audience than they do when they're actually trying to like win elections, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah I can agree. I can agree with that. Yeah, me too. And and again, like I said, the like the attack from all angles thing, I I understand and can respect. And you know, I'm all for trying to get the message in front of as many people as possible. And if it was just the, you know, because like I said, part of their platform and, and what I've heard a lot of these guys speak about is, you know, is is the ability to finally get somebody, uh, an actual principled, uh, like a real principled libertarian, you know, small L libertarian, not one of the big L libertarian yeah. party guys, um, or an anarchist up on a national debate stage, just to be able to get these ideas in front of people, kind of like when Ron Paul, even though he was running as a Republican at the time, uh, was able to get up there and he had that, you know, the classic battle with, with Giuliani where he just smacked Giuliani down, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, the, uh, you know, that, that, that did reach a lot of people and, and I can understand that, but what comes with that is what I really have the problem with. And the more and more I hear people talk about this, like I said, I, I heard Mance bring it up on his show the other day the amount of money that gets put into these things. Like, you know, it's a big deal that Ron Paul was able to raise like $6 million for his campaign, essentially grassroots style through this stuff. And yeah, that that's great. But what, what did they get for that money? They convert like a couple of people eventually converted to anarchism. $6 million. You know what, you, you know how many cities could be bought, like small cities, towns could be bought with that where a, a whole group of anarchists pick your flavor and 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 caps and comms whatever could purchase these and actually start the uh you know even if you want to do like the hoppers uh you know covenant communities or whatever like actually put this stuff into action like can you imagine how far six million dollars could go to towards a venture like that and I don't know about you guys, but that just bugs the heck out of me because they're all proud about being able to raise this money. And again, getting somebody on a debate stage is one thing, but in order to get them there, you have to keep them in the running, which means they have to keep get collecting more money to be able to have the campaign going. To me, that just seems like an incredible waste because you're still trying, in the end, you're still trying to either use the system against the system or change it from the inside. Right. When instead and, you could be taking that same chunk of money and actually putting these ideas into action right now in the present day and to be able to show people not you can, not just talk about it, not just have somebody up there who could talk a really good game and, and ex, even as somebody who could explain this, you know, as 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 perfectly as any of us could. I mean, like I said, that, that's great. But, you know, all that money. Why? Why? All it's doing is talking about it. Most people need to see these things in action in order for them to be convinced. That's just how most people operate. You could talk to your blue in the face, but to, until they can actually see results, especially when we're talking about pretty much altering a huge chunk of what they believe life is supposed to be all be about, you know, because of how everybody's been programmed and indoctrinated over the years. Uh, I don't know. What What are your guys' thoughts on that? Like I said, to me, I, I think the money could be put to such better use. Oh, well, yeah. As far as changing it from the inside, I don't think we're going to find anyone more principled than Ron Paul. And we saw what, you know, how many years of being in Congress, you know, as Dr. No actually got accomplished, which was practically nothing. Yeah, he did a lot to spread the message, but he didn't really change it from the inside. So... As far as spreading the message goes, I'm sure there's a lot more efficient ways that we can go about doing so. Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, spreading the it's it's nice to have a national pulpit. I mean, it always is. I'll never argue that point in the negative. Like it, it having 
a guy in front of the cameras like Ron Paul who can just deliver the message very succinctly, stay on point. And like that's what that's one of the things I loved about Ron Paul. Anytime you saw him in front of the press, that whole time, it was always on the message. Stuck in the weeds, stayed on point the entire time. The problem is, if you want to go down that road, you have to have somebody of the same speaking caliber as Ron Paul. And I don't know where you're going to find that person. I mean, maybe Tom Woods could do it, I suppose. I mean, I, I certainly got the media personality to do it. But, like, unless you're going to have that person every single time, you're not going to get there. You're just not going to get there. Um, there are a lot better ways to spend $6 million, ways that I think would uh, reflect, uh, not necessarily reflect, but would be uh, more productive in demonstrating to people how all of these ideas can work. The, the, yeah. One of the, one of the, one of the things that I, I, I think was the things that Ron Paul was talking about. But we can we can talk about decentralization of you know uh, governance and setting up covenant communities and stuff like that and self you know self sustaining communities, um, but a lot of what really got him a lot of traction and a lot of headlines was foreign policy. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, there's really not any way you can demonstrate foreign policy on a local level, person to person, in such a way that it it gets people in and gets people talking. You know what I mean? So there, there's pros and cons. I think the cons outweigh the pros significantly, but I can see where that could, you know, have a really positive effect, at least for, you know, people who aren't already where we are. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, and like I said, I, 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 I agree with you mostly. Uh, the one thing I would say, though, is uh, one of your first points about, you know, the fact that, if, you know, finding somebody who can deliver the message like Ron Paul that I'm not actually sure would be necessarily that difficult because it's it's actually this is actually something else that I, I picked up from listening to a lot of Mans Raider stuff. Uh, and when I thought about what he was saying, I, I kind of looked back and I was like, hey, you know what? He's kind of got a point. Uh, you know, Ron it, Ron Paul isn't the greatest speaker, but he did the one thing you said is he was able to keep everything on point. That's the one thing he was able to do well. I know plenty of people who can actually do that. I am not one of them. Obviously, <laughs> um, I get sidetracked very easily. Uh, oh yeah, neither I'm, neither am I. I'm I a lot do more that. verbose, but I I don't necessarily think finding another. I mean, you're not going to find another Ron Paul, but to find somebody who could deliver that message, you might be able to. But you know, like I said, my bigger issue is the fact that you know w the the money that's being pumped into this and the energy and the time, you know, for the for the for the net benefit. Yeah, I don't know. I really think, yeah, like no, said, I, I agree with you. The ROI is is very very low. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not it's not a it's it's not adequate. Like I I wouldn't if I had the money and the time, I would do something else. I would. Yeah, uh, you know, me too. And I think and 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 the other big problem that that I see, and this is something that I've been talking about for for years now. Uh, and, and it came up really big again uh, around election time last year, uh, last time uh, back in 2016, uh, when, uh, when, it, when, when so many people were jumping on the Trump bandwagon and anarchists, too, and saying, well, we have to because we have to stop Hillary. And, um, you know, and while I understood where they were coming from to, to a certain to a certain degree, the big point that I kept trying to make is when you do things, when you get so-called wins through the political system while it may get you closer to the goal that you think you or at least you think it gets you closer to the goal you want what it tends to do to the people that you're actually trying to reach you know the people out there who don't think like us yet uh what it teaches them is that the system can work for them and they can get what they want. You know, even the most disenfranchised voter, if their guy all of a sudden gets in, woohoo, we win. Or, you know, you get one law changed or you get one thing lowered. Like, is there a benefit to it? Yes. Um, would I rather have less taxes or less laws or what, and less government in general? Obviously. But I, I, I see this happen time and time again. 
and you 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 actually did see it happen. And I, I think a lot of these guys who are on this kick right now, who are so still enamored with the Ron Paul movement and the Ron Paul revolution and how things were back then, what I think they they at least this is what it seems to me that one of the big things they're missing is the reason that all died down wasn't because um, you know everybody became anarchists. It was like, oh, we're not going to play the p- political game anymore. No. There was a lot of people who started drifting in the direction of anarchism because of Ron Paul, but once he got screwed, once he got the, the, the shaft job multiple times, they just threw up their hands and were like, well, we, you know, we can't do it this way. And they started drifting back towards like conservatism. And stuff like that, and they never made the leap, or they got stuck in the LP, and they're they're you know they're minarchists, and they have no intention at this point of ever going further again, because the, you know either they lose and they figure well we tried now we have that now we have to go back because this is the only thing we can do um, is vote and try to get our guy in, or they do get wins, and then and then it just convinces the other people that hey the system does work. Yeah, sure, maybe it's flawed. Yeah, sure, maybe there's things that we could change. But get rid of it altogether? Oh, no, no, no. We don't want to do that. Um, you know, and I, right. I think, I, like I said, to me, I, I've been talking about this for years. I really think this is a, this is something that just, it, it, it ends up biting people. It ends up biting you in the ass. And I, I don't think a lot, I don't think enough people see it. Yeah. Reminds me of that meme with the Joker throwing his hands up, you know, and it's pretty much like, you know, mention government being bad and nobody bats an eye, but mention doing away with government altogether and everyone loses their mind. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> exactly. So I, I don't know. You know, I mean, if uh, I mean, maybe if there had been more converts, I guess, the last time around with this big Ron Paul revolution. And yes, I know there are plenty of people I know personally uh, came either through that through that revolution. I was one. Yeah. I, I, I wasn't. I, I came in later and I actually came in through Tom Woods who was, at, who was the one who actually introduced me to Ron Paul because I did like I knew Ron Paul's name but I didn't know much about other than, he, that, than his name and that he was a congressman from Texas. That's all I really knew about the guy uh, when I first started figuring everything out like 2011, 2012 because uh, I had already missed the 2008 uh, run and then I, I wasn't pay, you know I think I ended up voting for Johnson because I still wasn't I still wasn't uh, that smart in 2012. Um, but, y- you know, sure, I-, I know a bunch of people, but we're still an extreme minority. You know, like point how many zero, 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 one percent of the population are we really, you know, realistically? No matter how many times people want to point to like the last election and like, oh, look, 47 or 46 point whatever, whatever it was, didn't vote at all. That's who actually won. Yeah. Just because people didn't vote doesn't mean they're anarchists or anywhere close. Plenty of people over time end up uh, just becoming completely apathetic and giving up on the system, but they still have no intention of actually doing anything to change the system or get rid of the system. They just they become apathetic because they've decided that, well, there's nothing we could do. We just have to live with this. And Yeah, yeah voter apathy is going to be a thing regardless of whether there's a strong undercurrent of anarchy or not it has nothing to do with anything exactly it's it's nice to point it out i like pointing out the fact that the majority of americans actually didn't even vote for somebody and somebody was still elected like that's cool but that's about all it's good for it's it's good yeah exactly uh, yeah, I, I too, you know, like the number, yeah, sure, for for that specific purpose, like, yeah, it, it really doesn't matter how many people vote, they're still just going to stick somebody in there. But, I mean, especially this time around, you know, no matter how hated Hillary really is, uh, you know, not enough people cared to actually go out and do something about it, you know? And no matter how many people seem like, well, seem to, or at least the media tries to make it seem like so many people hate Trump. I mean, I, I have always thought the guy was an idiot, but um, a fascinating idiot, but an idiot. Um, uh, it, you know, I, I think I think the choices, and again, that 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 goes down to so many people 
whether they've given up or not, still just believing that there's really only these two choices you can pick from. Um, but they've just, it was really the choices more than anything else that caused people not to show up in droves. I mean, sure, I'm plenty of, there's, I'm sure there's plenty of anarchists and libertarians and maybe some other people who were like, no, I'm just, I give up, I, I can't do it anymore. This is, this whole thing's a sh- sham. Sure, there's plenty of us, out, there's, there's, a, there's some of us out there, but I think the overwhelming majority of that 46 or whatever percent just, was either so disgusted by the choices available (laughs) or just or or has just given up altogether and said uh yeah there's there's nothing i could do to change the system so whether i vote or not it doesn't matter but i'm just going to keep living and accepting the tyranny that i live under and just hoping it doesn't get worse so I, i i just don't you know like i said for all for all the good that was done by ron paul and people like him I don't think it had as big as an impact as, as a lot of these fo- folks would like to think. And how dare you speak poorly of Saint Ron? Oh God! Well, we we've done nothing but speak poorly of Saint Ron on this show. I mean, Jesus, what we had two like two of our longest episodes ever. We're pretty much just complete bashing. Well, actually, no. One was bashing of um, uh, uh, incrementalism, which turned into bashing of Ron Paul. Um, and then the other one was I mean, heck, it was titled it was titled uh, "Slaying Sacred Pauls." Because we've ripped apart Ron Paul, Ron and Rand. I take offense to <laughs> with, that. With Lou Fien. I'm deeply offended. I'm sure there's plenty of people who deeply are deeply offended. offended. Deeply just, offended. Just like the just like the deep the people who were deeply offended by my meme making fun of the whole Mises caucus actually trying to turn things around uh, in the ANCAP group today. Um, really, really mad, you know. I got the turn you know, I got called a commie right away, which was great. And I was just like, Oh man, you guys are triggered beyond belief. I didn't even have to say much. <laughs> Uh, well, I heard you do have an Antifa shirt. I well, yeah, apparently. Um, you know, big A, gold, black, says uh free the markets and the state. Totally Antifa's motto. <laughs> Just, that's actually funny. I don't I don't actually even refer to myself as an ANCAP anymore, and I actually have plenty of shirts that are actually ANCAP shirts. Um but no, I'm an Antifa guy, yeah. You crypto commie you. That's me. That's me. See, I don't know, man. Like I said, this 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 whole thing has just been. The more I hear about it, because I don't pay attention to what's going on in the world for the most part, and I try to stay off social media. But because I listen to these podcasts regularly, because that's one of the things that helps keep me sane when I'm out here on the road, and I'm not, especially when I'm not able to see my kids. Uh, you know, the more and more I hear about it, I'm just like, really, really, we're we're gonna go down this road again. People are gonna invest their time, energy, and money. You know, in in hopes of sparking another so-called revolution, which number one didn't actually get us very far, and number two, how many times do I have to explain this to you people? A revolution is a fucking circle. Why do you want a revolution? It's just going to bring you back to the same bullshit. <laughs> have you learned nothing from history? You people. You exactly. You, you people. people. Okay. You people. You, okay. That's how I see where this is that's going. how I'm gonna play see it. See where this is going. Right. No, that's fine. That's I'm that's a, total, I'm, I'm a racist totally antifa. You, you have you have revealed yourself, sir, and that's <laughs> that's enough for me. <laughs> well, it was nice having Andre with us for a little bit tonight. <laughs> Now that he's going to <laughs> now that he's going to leave the show because of my horrible my horrible nature. Done, done with this. Um, done. I'm kidding. But yeah, but seriously, I mean, I say it, I say it all the time, and I don't think people really get this. Like, it really is a revolution is circular. That's kind of what happens. And you know, you can just look again, just look at history to see it happen time and time and time again. You know, one of the one of the greatest failures ever, I believe, is was the uh, so called American Revolution. Because look how bad things got in a rather short amount of time. <laughs> yeah, whiskey rebellion. Yeah, at whiskey rebellion, aliens and edition X. Um, which, by the way, um, my bias was confirmed on that as, as being as atrocious as it was when I heard a recent Tom Woods episode. Uh, the judge, uh, Andrew Napolitano, was on there, and uh, you know he, you know, he was talking in terms of constitutional stuff because he was actually somewhat praising uh, what's his name, Alito, that's the, one of the Supreme Court judges who apparently, yep. he, who apparently, he was. Uh, I guess they were roommates in college together or something like that, or at least they were really close in college. Um, and they're still friends. And I mean, he, he said that he, he, Napolitano said that he doesn't agree with a lot of his stances, but he says he has great respect for his intellect and whatever. Um, 
but he said it too, like when, because uh, Tom Woods asked him uh, to name like the most egregious uh, uh, Supreme Court decisions or whatever that he could, or, or you know, I, basically uh, breaches of the Constitution that he could think of off the top of his head. And I think the Alien and Sedition Acts was the second thing he mentioned. Um, and yeah, so the Alien and Sedition Acts, uh, which, which actually were used multiple times, they were re-implemented at least three times, I think. Because Wilson did it in, in, in during World War One, I. I think that was the third iteration, or maybe the fourth iteration of it, where it was brought back, where they were jailing people for dissenting against the uh, government for what they were doing, type of thing. Um, uh, also in the Civil War, during the Civil War, yes. uh, there was a senator from Indiana. I God think. Damn it, man! Why does all this bad stuff I always hear about Indiana? You know, I was supposed to move there. What the fuck? What's up with your well, whole state, no, he was he was talking out of he was talking out against the government and Lincoln had him in prison. So oh, that's right, that's right. He was one of the good ones. Never mind, I take that back. Uh, <laughs> it's changed a little in the last century and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shh, nobody needs to know about it. That's nobody right. needs to know. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. So like I said, I, yeah, the Civil War, and there might have been one other time, but like those the original Alien Sedition Acts and the Whiskey Rebellion both happened, I believe, less than a decade after the Constitution was ratified. Uh, yeah. So yeah, well, I know the Whiskey Rebellion was definitely less than a decade, but it'll be the Sedition Acts because that was during Adams' term, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, it was. So you know, right away, right off the bat, uh, things went to hell in a handbasket. You know, and this was after the what is what is widely considered, at, at least you know, in in a, in a good old American lore, and I believe in it's taught in some other in other countries too. Like you know, the American Revolution is pointed to as like you know one of the greatest revolutions of all time. You know, the successful revolution that actually brought freedom to the individual. It's like, eh, did, like now I'm picturing that uh, that the the Thor me, the the meme from Thor Ragnarok where you know him and Banner are like, is it though? Is it really though? <laughs> Is, is it the greatest? Uh, that's going to have to be the meme for the show. I'm going to have to make that one. Uh, <laughs> the American Revolution was the greatest revolution of all time. Was it really, though? Because <laughs> <laughs> look how bad things got. And now here we are, 200 plus years later, and it's a fucking shit show. We've been living under, a, as, as Robert as Robert Higgs refers to it, soft fascism for the better part of 80-something years now. Close to 90, I guess. Well, yeah, but it could be worse. Could be worse. Oh, it absolutely could be worse. But again, this is this is one of those things. You know, going back to what I was talking about with the uh, the vote, like uh, people who are on the fence, um, or people who you think the people that that you're trying to that uh, others are trying to convert over, or at least get the ideas and of libertarianism, anarchism in front of them, so they'll hopefully convert themselves, type of thing. Um, just like those people see wins in the political realm as you know oh great the system does work maybe we don't have to get rid of it altogether um when you live under soft fascism it may not be as bad in the present as it could be but in some respects i believe it's actually more detrimental because it's it, because it's not in your face it's the frog in the boiling pot scenario where people just become slowly more accustomed to the lack of freedom and the and well i mean it's it's the same it's the same problem as with everything that you talk about politically with people or really in in any terms it's because people lack foresight generally speaking uh most people you'll talk to don't think about precedent like most people that are engaged politically um especially on the left they don't think about the consequences of action they don't think about blowback it's why blowback was like this you know monument monumentally difficult concept to get people to understand Yeah, I can see, that. you know, four or five steps ahead. Right. So it's I hate I hate to say, you know, I, I hate to frame talking about um, where the United States was and where just by saying, look, it's things are bad. I mean, things are bad. Academically speaking, things could be much worse. And there is a very, very short list of places where things are any better. Right. But when you try to speak without bias in that manner, it, exactly what you're talking about happens because people don't have the foresight to realize that things that are happening now and things that have happened recently and in the past will have ramifications in the future, right? So, yeah, I totally understand. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I why you have to why you have to phrase why you have to phrase the conversation in this manner, right? Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not saying that like America's 
uh, the greatest country in the world or anything. It's not. We we all on the show totally acknowledge that it's not. I just wish that we could talk about it in plain terms without it being taken out of context. Well, yeah, that that would be nice, but unfortunately, you know, people. Uh, Nobody thinks about precedent. Well, yeah. See, uh, yeah, and and again, that that's something I, you know, I, I uh, that's a great point, and I, I I love that because, uh, you know, that's what I talk about all the time. The fact that I, I think way too many people, um, at least the ones that I interact with, are so much more focused on economics, and that's their, you know, that's that's their, uh, you know, their what you call it, their uh, their strong suit. Wheelhouse. Yeah, their wheelhouse, their strong suit, which is great. It's needed, and as I've spoken about before, it's definitely not mine. That's one of my weaker sub. I mean, I've gotten better over the years, but it's still one of my weaker subjects. Um, however, uh, I, I really think too many people are focused on that, and they don't focus on the history and the precedent. And it's like, well, why haven't the? It's it's not like well, we need to try it a little differently or whatever. But like, why hasn't this whole thing worked before? <laughs> And not just the people in our circles either, you know, the people we're trying supposedly trying to reach too. It's like they have no concept of why, you know, they, they, most people still believe that, you know, the whole, we just need to get the right people in there, um, or different people. And, you know, you, you were mentioning, um, how, uh, you know, leftists in particular lack, lack that foresight. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you would include the neocons as, as in the left. Oh yeah, category. of course I would. Of course okay. I would. Are you kidding me? Oh, I'm just making sure. Yeah, because obviously, oh, they, yeah, yeah. yeah, they're the yeah, they're, absolutely. Yeah, the, yeah, the progressive neocons, um, which actually are a bolt. Like whether 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 people want to admit it or not, that's actually where the bulk of the people seem to be these days. <laughs> At least the ones who are still in the voting public. Um, you know, that's uh, they 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 definitely fall within that category because even the even the most social, social justice warrior ones will put on their fucking. Um, neocon let's stomp the hell out of everybody fucking boots uh, when it comes time because all they have to do is be given the slightest bit of propaganda and they uh they fall they fall for it every fucking time because they lack that they they lack the foresight and they lack the they just lack the historical knowledge of why these things have failed repeatedly you know and you don't, you don't even have you don't even have to go so far as the you know like the socialist countries that continue to fail i mean that's bad enough but you know to try to because even that you were you know you were saying like to, to say the, to be able to say these things um and had not have it taken out of context yeah it's a problem because a lot even even some people some some statists i guess for lack of a better term can actually you know a decent number of them can actually see the failings of the socialist or the you know the, the by name socialist countries um at least especially in the present day with like venezuela and stuff like that but those, a lot of those same people will still point to the other alleged socialist bastions, which actually aren't like the um, Norwegian countries. Um, you know, they always love to point to like Finland and stuff like that. Norway, it's like, no, they didn't actually build that all on socialism, you schmucks. Um, <laughs> there was a lot of, especially was it Norway, right? There was a huge amount of free market capitalism that actually led. Them, oh yeah, that actually yeah, led. And then, they, and then they went down the socialism path, and now they're realizing that it's not going to work anymore. So now they're turning right back around. Yes, and unlike countries like Venezuela, which doubled down on this shit and just continued to keep doing the same bullshit over and over and over again these countries that are pointed to by some by a lot of these economic illiterates uh have like you said actually said oh wait a minute we made a boo-boo and uh we we need to go backwards um i think i read a lot of stuff uh, last year or the year before about uh denmark doing the same thing because for the longest time denmark was I, th- I think it was denmark had like the the like the largest welfare state um i think i think it was them that pretty much pretty much everybody was on welfare there and uh, even they were like, "Oh yeah, shit! This is this is not working out very well for us." Yeah, um, do the math. But yeah, but the people here on both sides of the aisle, or actually, they're all on the same side of the aisle. As, as I'm freaking concerned because they're on the, they're on the wrong side from us. Um, but they could e- even the ones that could point to those and say, "Oh yeah, you know, Venezuela, like look, it just fails every time." Or even the other ones, "Oh look, they're actually changing their mind about these things." But you try to you try to point out that hey wait a minute do do you realize that this has been going on here too just not to the same ex- not to the uh, um, extent uh, you know again back to that frog in the boil- boiling pot thing um, it's been happening on a lot slower scale like you you don't realize it oh no 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 this is it's much different it's that's not it's not the same at all <laughs> yeah conservatives are just different kinds of socialists yes 
They, they, <laughs> they definitely are. So, um, but yeah, so I, I don't know, man. Like, like, I, like I've been saying, uh, I, I'm all for this, all, all, you know, attack, the, the attack at all angles and things and stuff. But, you know, we have, we have enough problems connecting with people. I, I don't know if spending millions and millions of dollars and, you know, countless man hours and, and, and the amount of energy and like what, what kind of money that translates into too. Cause you, as we, as we all know here, time is money. Um, you know, I, I just don't see how using, e- even attempting to use the LP platform to get these messages out there. Um, if it, in, if it also involves sucking all these resources down in the process, yeah, I just, I, I don't see, I don't see it panning out and I, I see it actually, um, either turning more people off to the LP or bringing up, bringing more people there, but then just having it quickly turn into any, like even worse than it is right now into. Any oh yeah. Bringing people. the wrong people in. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, changing it from the inside obviously doesn't work and, uh, appealing to a wider base just waters down the message so that when you finally do get through to that, that wider base, you know, you're not getting the message out in any way. Exactly. So, yeah, I am, uh, I am, I am, I am more, more for, you know, I mean, you could do your own thing if you want. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of doing my own thing at the moment, but I have a larger purpose uh, and that is to try to invest my time, energy and effort <laughs> into making something that can be shown in real time. Uh, these ideas being put into practice, you know, by building an intentional community and stuff like that um, to show people that, you know, yeah, these ideas, they, they, they don't just sound great on paper, which is always so funny when I hear people throw that around about it. it's like, isn't that the same thing you say about every, every other per, every person says about the, the thing they don't like? It's like, oh, it sounds great on paper, but it's like, yeah, it's all the same thing. Yeah, they all do sound great on paper. Even our ideas, they sound great on paper, <laughs> but they don't fucking matter. It doesn't fucking matter unless you put them into practice. Right, you know, because communism, state, state communism, state socialism sound great on paper, but then you put them into practice and you see the death tolls, <laughs> you see the bread lines. All right, um, our ideas. I mean, we we believe our ideas to be solid. I I, I think I'm pretty sure of that. Um, and I think to some extent, we people like us, we do try to put them into practice as much as we can. But you know, to do it on a large enough scale to be able to convince other people. That's what, you know, that's what I really think people should be going after, especially if you actually want to see this shit happen or at least any close facsimile of more freedom happening in your lifetime. Doesn't it? I, I, I don't know. I, I would think it would behoove people to actually, uh, you know, put their time, effort and money into stuff that can be shown rather than just talked about. Because, I mean, look how, you know, part of the other problem, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, uh, of the downturn after the Ron Paul revolution was all these other factions of, uh, like, libertarianism and anarchism all started, like, most of them existed, although a lot of them are relatively new as far as I know, you know, like, anarcho-transhumanism and anarcho-feminism and all the, like, all the different other offshoots or whatever. Like, all this stuff started sprouting up, too, because you had a bunch of people that, decided to get together for the idea of freedom and then they then they kind of realized well we, we don't actually agree on a lot of this stuff so they all started going their separate ways <laughs> and then you had all this stupid infighting and for years people have just been bickering back and forth on social media um and trying to out theorize one another and there's not nearly enough people doing anything about it right and uh, that's where i think Konkin and some of the early uh founders of the libertarian party actually had it right and whether it's uh, van nomadism or homesteading, any ways that we can become more self-sustainable and off-grid are in the system while at the same time, you know, supporting ourselves and our communities. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like I said, I don't know. I, I, you know. I, I, I've been I've been trying I've been trying to preach it for years. Not enough people want to listen, man. Practice over theory, baby. It's, yep. uh, you know you can you can theorize gotta... you can theorize about this shit all you want, and you may you might be a hundred percent fucking right, but it's kind of hard to convince most people just by your words. Yeah, uh, when you just talk the talk, people don't pay attention until you walk the walk. Exactly. You know, 
another okay. re- another reason I love to pick on uh, you know a lot of my uh, ANCAP friends and some some of them that aren't my friends is that you know unfortunately the reality is most ANCAPs are some of the most horrible capitalists you'll ever meet. None of them are doing goddamn <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> they're all working for the man somewhere and bitching about shit. And it's like, well, dude, why aren't you out there doing things? <laughs> Come on, get off your ass. Be a capitalist. You know? <laughs> yep. Fuck. I never even considered myself one for the longest time. And I stumbled into it. I did it for a decade. I did it for, tw- I did it for a dozen years, you know? Come on. Yeah. You know, do this shit. Live this shit. Um, I don't know. That's my message. Um, yep. you provided a valuable service. Exactly. You know? So, uh, and I, I, you know, I, I took my own startup capital and did it all myself. Um, so, uh, so yeah, you know, if some schmuck like me who barely understood economics at all when I got into the, when I got into my business, if I could figure it out, you guys who know everything about economics, you think you'd be able to do? I don't know. Um, <laughs> but uh, let's see. I'm looking at the clock. We've been going for about an hour now, and uh, I don't know if you guys any, have any more to say on this. We we can keep going, but I, I th- think just because uh, unfortunately. Both of you, although it's more more, more Andre has, has cut out a, a couple of different times here and there. Uh, well, I, I Andre, it, I don't want to push it too much further. Andre had to go and make a phone call, so I believe he uh, left a few minutes ago. Oh, I didn't even and, see that. Uh, I'm not looking yeah. at the Skype chat. So, all right. So and uh, I don't really have any final thoughts that I really need to add. You've pretty much said I agree with everything you and Andre said uh, during this last half. So, yeah. Oh, all right. Well, then, since Andre's gone, I'm not. I'm not looking at the Skype chat, so I didn't even realize it, um, or unless he said it and he cut out on my end, I didn't hear him. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. So I guess this is as good a place as to wrap it up as any, and just because, like I said, I don't want to push it any further. We've actually uh, had pretty decent luck tonight, and uh, hopefully by next, well, next week may be tough because of my trial. We'll see. Um, it might actually be over by Thursday. Who the hell knows? Um, but we'll, we'll. Uh, I'll try to uh, try to get a, a better location. Hopefully, finally get hardwired to do a show. And uh, then we will have a much better connection. And uh, hopefully then I can set up the rest of my equipment and we won't have to use Skype anymore. Uh, I, we, we did actually get an offer. I, I would like to say a thank you because um, I'm sure he'll listen to this at some part, at some point. Uh, one of our multiple time uh, former guests and fill-in co-host from time to time, Donnie Gebert, uh, actually reached out to me and offered his services as playing a middleman so that we can use Fiend Phone uh, going forward again. Although it still requires me having a good internet connection, um, but if I could set things up with him, hopefully, even if I'm using Wi-Fi, as long as I have a good connection, uh, he he's going to be willing to uh, ser- uh, ser- serve as our server <laughs> for the show, so that I can still do the recording, and then we don't have to worry about me trying to carry the extra load of being not only connecting through the Wi-Fi but running the server off of it. So, right on. So hopefully one way or another, uh, within the next week or two, we will finally have everything sorted out and we will start bringing you shows more regularly. Um, and I won't have to keep throwing all these intermission episodes and uh, random other podcasts that, I've, that we've cobbled together. <laughs> well, I hope your trial goes well. I know that Florida Woman and I will have you in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, wishing you good luck on that. And as far as... Uh, you know, finding somewhere to hard connect to the internet. If you're ever in the Midwest, you know, you're welcome to stop by <laughs> my little studio here and uh, do a live show. Well, yes, I, I, I appreciate that, man. Well, I, I've actually talked about this recently. Um, depending on how things go with my trial um, and depending on how things go with uh, my, my situation with, uh, with Jen and the kids now, um, since we are... Uh, since, since we've had our issues again and we're back to trying to figure out how we can co-parent um, if uh, if my kids don't end up moving out of the state with me like was originally planned I may just stay on the road for a while and just keep doing the van nomad thing and if that's the case I'm just going to be stopped by everybody's house I'm just going to drive all over and I'll be like hey I'm here let's hang out for a while oh by the way I need to record a show you're cool with that right and uh, you can even come on if you want um, with you obviously you'd come on but like anybody else I'm just going to I'm just going to drive everywhere and uh, maybe do the van nomad thing for longer than i thought but we'll see what happens but yeah yeah i'll uh for uh for those listening because this will this will this should come out on monday during the regular time uh and uh that means it'll come out before i actually start trial uh so for those who listen on monday uh be sure to check uh check check my steam account for the court update which is sure to come that that uh 
afternoon or evening. And uh, despite the uh, recommendations and suggestions I've gotten multiple times, I'm not going to stop doing those. I'm going to continue to do them through the trial um, after every day of the goddamn trial. <laughs> because they have screwed me over so goddamn much at this point and it dragged this out so long, for so long i just don't give a flying fuck anymore um i am going to keep recording and uh, documenting this entire process um especially if i need to go to a court of appeals at some point but anyway so yeah okay uh, there there will be updates on this but with that we will get wrapping up so thank you everybody for listening this has been the seeds of liberty podcast all of our information can still be found at solpodcast.org. Although I went there recently and realized shows haven't been updated in a while. I keep forgetting to reach out to Paul Gordon about that and find out what the problem is. Um, but our, all of our information can be found there. The most recent episodes can always be found on steamit.com slash at abolitionist J or steamit.com slash at uh, seeds of liberty. So, um, you can always find our stuff there and that's actually where it goes first anyway, but I'll try to get on Paul Gordon's rear end and find out what's going on with our website, but all of our stuff can be still, uh, all of our contact information stuff can still be found there. The Patreon is still up and running. Uh, once again, I do apologize that there hasn't been any new content, uh, that, 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 what should be lost episode from last week will probably make it there eventually. Uh, once I, once I get through the trial next week and I have a better idea of what's going to be happening in the next six months or so of my life. Um, then I'm going to finally sit down and start cranking out some uh, extra, you know, doing some extra editing work and uh, getting more stuff out there. But thank you, everybody who continues to support us through Patreon. We really, really, really appreciate it. Um, and uh, for anybody who isn't yet, uh, please consider doing so. Uh, even though there hasn't been content in a little while, there's plenty of episodes to listen to on there. We've put out like 20 or 30 uh, Patreon episodes and uh, there will be more coming and there are more perks uh, for the higher level donors, which uh, we've we've had to put on hold for a little bit, but we will get back to those soon. So uh, please consider throwing us uh, just a dollar a month. Uh, some pl- some people ask you for a dollar or an episode or more. We're still at a dollar a month, and you can get access to all the stuff we put up there. So with that, once again, we're go- we're going to wrap up. Thank you everybody for listening, and we will catch you next time. Peace. Asparagus. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I totally forgotten about that until I heard as soon as you started saying the word, I'm like, oh god, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish I would have done it that day, but uh, hey, whatever. Better late than never. That, that was This is Daryl W. Perry, host of Free Talk Live. This November, I'll be running in the world's biggest and most popular marathon, the New York City Marathon, and I've accepted a spot on Team Innocence Project because I'm a passionate supporter of their work. Since 1989, 353 people in the United States have been exonerated by DNA testing, including 38 who pled guilty to crimes they did not commit and 20 of whom served time on death row. The Innocence Project provided direct representation or critical assistance in 180 of these cases. With your help, the Innocence Project can help even more people who have been wrongly convicted. As part of Team Innocence Project, I am raising awareness about wrongful convictions and raising funds to help free the innocent. I've already paid the race registration fees. However, to secure my spot on Team Innocence Project in the New York City Marathon, I need to raise $3,500 by November 1st. You can support the Innocence Project and help me secure my race entry by going to run.freetalklive.com.